Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Hey, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who have been here before, thanks for tuning back in. For the new folks here, thanks for dropping by. Normally, we're doing videos on camping and particularly teardrop camping and building teardrop campers. And I really enjoy that, but it's not the only hobby I have. I've also been flying radio controlled airplanes for a very long time. Uh, matter of fact, I started, I think, in about 1991, so 28 years I've been flying model airplanes, and I really, really enjoy it. Well, today it's Saturday. It's a hot day here in East Tennessee. be a great day to hang out in the workshop with an air conditioner. Um, not too long ago, I picked this big bird up at a swap meet, which is kind of like a model airplane flea market. Um, some guy had it, had flown it, you know, a pretty good while and was ready to move on to a different airplane. So he pulled the motor out of it and the radio gear out of it and just sold the body for a few bucks. It was a super good deal and I just happened to have a motor and radio system to put back in it. So, hey, let's get this thing going. Before I start putting the motor and control system in here, I'm a big fan of like Alaska bush planes. In other words, those uh, planes that has the wing on top with the huge wheels where they can land in you know, rough terrain, I just really am drawn to that look. Um, this plane happened to come with some smaller tires on it and what they call wheel pants. And although that looks nice, it doesn't have any, any resemblance whatsoever of an Alaska bush plane, I happen to have some large Tundra tires um, from another build laying around the shop and I'm going to see if these will fit on this plane. I think it would make it look super cool. Man, that looks good. That was definitely the right thing to do. So here's the tires that, that came off the airplane against the tires that I just put on it. You can see you can see how much bigger the new ones are. Oh my goodness, that looks so much better. So you're probably looking at this airplane. I'm going to call it the donor airplane and wondering why am I going to pull parts out of it to put in the other one? Well, for one, the other one's bigger. I just want a bigger airplane. I think it'd be cooler to, you know, look at a bigger model in the air. Um, now this one's a little fatter or wider or like me, it's chubbier. Um, but it's still, it's a smaller airplane. Uh, the second thing is the other airplane, the one I'm going to be putting the parts into, um, it has a longer fuselage, it has a long elliptical wing, I think it's going to have some pretty good uh, uh, glide ratio or gliding characteristics, but it also has wing flaps, so I should be able to do some shorter takeoff and landings, so yeah, it's the biggest reason why is one just the size and the flying characteristics. So I just got the motor mounts mounted on the front of the fuselage. Now I'm just going to loosely mount the engine on there while I hook up the uh, throttle cable, fuel lines, and whatever else, and then I'll crank or uh, tighten the engine down. So I guess you could say I'm going to go fishing now. I've got a servo I'm going to put in the tail but I need to run an extension from it all the way up here to the receiver's gonna be. So I'm just gonna fish it through the fuselage with this little springy claw thing I've got. And there it is. Whew, okay y'all. I'm tired. Let me see what time it is. I came out of here 
at 10 o'clock this morning. It's exactly 10 o'clock at night. So uh, minus lunch and supper, I've been out here for 12 hours. I got the motor swapped over. I got the motor ignition battery and switch in. I got the battery for the airplane, uh, all the control surfaces in. I got all the servos in the fuselage. I still have to do the servos in the wing. Um, got the fuel tank in and plumbed. Wheels switched over. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good progress. Tomorrow, I'll drop some servos in the wing, uh, put a receiver in there, tie up a few loose ends, and it'll be ready to go. So, hey, if you all want to stay out here and work on this tonight, have at it. I'm going to hit the rack. So we're back in the workshop. It's a new day, and I almost had a major disaster. Um, I've got two batteries in the plane, one for the ignition, one for the control system. I came out early this morning, and I put the one for the ignition on charge, which is a nickel metal hydride battery. It's kind of a slow charge battery. I came back out uh, just a few minutes ago to see how it was doing. Oh my goodness. I plugged the charge cable into the wrong port. I plugged it into the lithium battery port. I don't know what I was thinking, but look at this. Let me get this turned around where you can see it good. Look at this thing. Let me see if I can get the camera to... There we go. That battery is a lithium battery, and I had it plugged in. Um, go back to focus here. I had it plugged in with the wrong uh, wrong connection I had it charged on a nickel metal hydride setting and it exploded the battery that could have caught on fire and of course the plane being balsa wood it would have caught the plane on fire I could have lost my workshop this morning how stupid was that I've been flying for years and years I've never done anything like that so I just need to slow down I just need to pay attention to what I'm doing or I'm gonna have a serious accident so I just pulled the fuselage off the uh, table and now I've got the wing on here and I'm going to start um, installing servos in the flaps and ailerons. Alright, one wing down, one wing to go. So I just got both wings finished. Now I just need to go back and set up my servos. Um, the servos are basically a little box with an arm on them, and that arm moves back and forth. And what you do is you, you hook up a little rod to that arm, and it goes to a control surface or a, a throttle, um, any number of things. And a servo basically has a midpoint, and it also has a travel adjustment, how far it'll go back and forth, and I need to set that. And on my throttle, uh, since my carburetor on the engine is towards the back of the motor and I really can't see in there, I like to adjust that with one of these little dental tools um, and a flashlight. And basically, I just stick the dental tool in behind the carburetor and I shine a flashlight on it and look at it. I hold that with my, my neck here and then I'll move the stick on the radio back and forth and see how it acts. And this one actually was set right. How lucky is that? All right, so we are en route to the flying field. I actually skipped ahead just a little bit. Um, I didn't want to drag the camera around. I got in a real big hurry. I'm sorry about that, but you know how it is. Um, I, got the, I got the airplane out in the yard, just a fuselage, and I fired the engine up. It took, gosh, it took five, 10 minutes to get the motor to start, but it's been a long time since that motor's ran. Um, but anyway, I got it started. I tuned on it a little bit, rode it around the yard, 
there's still some tweaks and some adjustments and some things I need to do at the flying field before I put it in the air, but it's close enough to go ahead and throw in the truck and do my last minute work there. So let's get on to the flying field. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I am gonna get my teardrop in this video, even though it's about flying. Um, I've actually got it in tow behind me. The wing is so large that even though it breaks apart into two pieces, I can't really get it in the front of my truck. And I don't wanna put it in the back of my truck because I'm afraid the wing will get scratched up. So, hey, I just hooked up the teardrop and laid the wing halves on top of the mattress underneath the quilt. So, uh, yeah, I knew I'd get a teardrop in here somehow. Okay, I'm on the road that goes to the flying field. I'm probably a quarter, maybe a half mile away. I got a crazy idea. I'm gonna get my drone out and I'm gonna fly it over the flying field and just hover over everybody. Um, Cause they don't even know that I'm almost here yet. All they're gonna know is that there's just a wild drone flying over them. So I'm gonna fly a drone over the flying field and just sneak up on them. That's gonna be so funny. So I put the wing on the rascal, the big, that's the name of the plane. And uh, it ended up, there was a problem. I had to do some maintenance. So I got a wooden dowel glued in here and I've got it drying right now with epoxy. So hopefully here in about 30, 45 minutes, we'll be ready to try it again. all right y'all i'm gonna have to fast forward about five days um, i know i just showed you a little clip of the plane in the air but the motor ended up dying shortly after that clip was made i was coming in for a landing and the motor quit so i had to do what we call a dead stick landing which basically just means i glided into land not that big of a deal um, but the motor's not running right. So I took the engine back home, took the plane and motor back home. And over the week, um, after work, I've been tinkering with it. I replaced the fuel tank and the old fuel lines, put a new spark plug in it and gapped that, put in a new ignition battery, um, just kind of went through it. The only thing I haven't done is replace the seals and the pump and the carburetor, I just because I don't have one laying around, a rebuild kit. Um, but anyway, I just took the plane to work with me today and I'm on my way back to the flying field. I'm going to try this again. Hopefully it'll do better this time. Um, also picking up some fresh gas. So if it doesn't do better this time, I know I've got to rebuild the carburetor. But let's get to the flying field and see how this fella performs.
got to thank my cameraman here. <laughs> he said he didn't know if he had a steady hand, but he looked like he was holding the video off of steel to me. Well, I tried. <laughs> All right, so it's running way better than it did last time. Last time, I think I did three landings with it, and every time I landed it, the motor died on final approach. And um, this time, it's not died once, and I've done several landings, so much better. All right, so we're gonna wrap up this video at the Sorry Dogs Flying Club with my buddies Orban and Robert. Normally doing teardrop camper videos and we'll be back to that real shortly, but I just wanted to fly this plane. So anyway, uh, if you like this episode, give me a thumbs up. And uh, there we go, yeah, we got the thumbs up. There we go, and give me a subscribe on that so if you wanna come back next time. So, hey, until next time, take care. Leave your cell phone in the seat while you're driving, and we'll see you on the road. Robert, do one of them things I did last time right before I crashed.